The Creative Cloud Packager makes it easy to create packages that contain Adobe Creative Cloud applications and updates. These packages can then be deployed to client machines across your organization. This video is to help guide customers using Creative Cloud for Education device licensing through the process of creating a deployment package. If you're using name licensing, please see the separate Deploying Creative Cloud for Teams video. In order to deploy using Creative Cloud for Education device licensing, you must have already placed an order by contacting your Adobe reseller. Once you've enrolled in the VMP program and placed a device license order, you will receive a confirmation email. This confirmation email has a link to the admin console. If you have existing name seats, you can view and manage those here. For device licensing, which is what we're focusing on today, it is important to note that at this time it is not possible to order and manage seats through the portal itself. This must be done through your reseller who will place the order on your behalf. Here you'll also be able to download the deployment tools. Just click on the deployment tools link on the left hand side, then download the Creative Cloud Packager for whichever platform that you're targeting. Now let's review the process of creating a deployment package. First click on the Creative Cloud for Education option and you'll be asked to log in. Just be sure to log in using the administrator's email address and password. The Creative Cloud Packager will now be initialized and download the latest information for you to be able to create your deployment packages. Once you've launched the Creative Cloud Packager, you'll have the option to create a new package or edit an existing package. Let's click on the Create Package option to create a new deployment package. And we need to give the package a name. In this case, I'm going to bundle Photoshop and Lightroom, so I'm going to give it the name Photography. And you can select a location where it should create the deployment package. And I've got a folder I've already created called Creative Cloud Packages. I'll select Open. And now we need to select one of the organizations associated with your account. In this case, I'm going to select Trinity College 1. Next, we need to select a license type. Only license types that you've purchased will be available in this drop-down selection. The options are named license, which requires users to sign in using an Adobe ID, or device license, where the license is actually tied to the machine where the applications are being installed. Here we want to select the device license option. After you've selected device license, you need to select a deployment pool. The deployment pools are going to be based on your licensing agreement with Adobe. In this case, I'm going to select the complete deployment pool, which gives me access to all of Adobe's Creative Cloud applications. On the right side, we can also see the Deployed To column. This will increment as IT admins deploy the package and licenses get activated. This information can be useful for IT administrators who are managing software licenses. We also have the option to change the deployment package configuration. Creative Cloud for Education device licensing customers can disable the Creative Cloud desktop application. This is not an option if you're using name deployment. You can disable Adobe Air components, and this would disable the installers, including Adobe Community Help. You can define the behavior if conflicting processes are encountered, whether it should abort the installation or ignore the conflicts and continue installation. You can also define Adobe Update Manager behavior, whether Adobe Update Manager is disabled, whether admin users update via the Adobe Update Manager, or it uses an internal update server. We can enable or disable the Remote Update Manager, which allows administrators to remotely invoke the Adobe Update Manager. Or we can change the default installation location for contents of the deployment package. I'm going to leave these at the defaults and hit Save. And now let's walk through building an actual deployment package. For the deployment package, we can choose the language. I'm going to leave this on English North America for now. And then we can choose which products and updates we want included. Since I'm doing a photographer's package, I'm going to include Lightroom and Photoshop. And if we wanted to, we could choose just the applications, or we could select just updates. So you could create deployment packages which contain only updates if you want to update all of your machines. We can also view archived versions of the applications. So if you want to access CS6 or older applications uh, as your license permits, or you have the ability to add offline media. And this would be the case if you want to create a deployment package based upon a DVD. And you may also notice the errors that are on the right hand side. The Creative Cloud Packager will download and cache all applications that have been downloaded. So in this case, I've already got Lightroom and Photoshop downloaded. And these are saved on the local machine for creating future deployment packages. Let's go ahead and hit build. And this will download all the Creative Cloud applications that you've selected 
and assemble the deployment package. This downloads the complete applications that will be installed through the Creative Cloud Packager. These are full applications running on the desktop. It's not as though you'll be running Creative Cloud applications through a web browser. Now we can see that the Creative Cloud Packager has successfully created our deployment package containing Lightroom and Photoshop. Inside my Creative Cloud Packages folder, we can see that a photography folder has been created, which corresponds with this deployment package. Inside that folder, we have a build and an exceptions folder. The build folder will contain a .pkg installer and also an uninstaller for easily removing the applications. For Windows machines, this would be a .msi installer. For Mac, it's a .pkg. These installers can then be used with a third-party deployment tool such as Jamf's Casper or Microsoft SCCM, or they can be used for device imaging. If you are using imaging, you should always launch the applications to make sure that they've been installed correctly before creating a master image. The exceptions directory will contain anything that could not be bundled as part of the main .pkg or .msi package. In here, you would also find the exceptions deployer application, which could be used to install those exception applications. And there we have it. We've successfully created a deployment package with the Creative Cloud Packager. Let's jump back to the main menu. And here we could create another package or edit an existing package, possibly even the one we just created, or we can go ahead and let's look at the preferences. Here we can specify the cache folder for applications that are downloaded by the Creative Cloud Packager, or we can purge the cache folder if you'd like to reclaim file space. This has been the Creative Cloud Packager for customers using Creative Cloud for Education device licensing. If you'd like to learn more about each individual application, be sure to check out the learning resources at creative.adobe.com. Thanks.